Have you ever seen The Notebook? Well, the other day I decided to watch it. Now it was a fine movie for the most part, but there was a scene that didn't really sit right with me. Now, I would say spoiler alert, but this movie came out 17 years ago, so consider yourself warned. So in this scene, the rain is pouring, there's beautiful music playing, and the main character, Noah, has just finished professing his love to the other main character, Allie. And in the heat of the moment, he grabs her face and he kisses her. This is meant to be a beautiful, romantic moment. There's music playing in the background. Everything seems perfect. But when we strip away the soundtrack and the tricks that films use to convince us of a situation, it isn't all that romantic. All you see is the main character, Noah, grabbing Allie's face and pushing it towards himself. Had this been real life, Allie would not have been able to fight him or push away if she wasn't comfortable with the situation. This is worrying. Had this been real life, all we would have been stuck with was those nonverbal cues. This is a problem. Here's a fun fact about nonverbal cues. They're unreliable. In a Time Magazine article written by a neuroscientist, she notes, quote, The human brain is wired so that people see what they believe. In many cases, without verbal consent, two people could be experiencing the same events very differently. They can, in effect, be experiencing very different situations. This means that it is important to get verbal consent, whether you're in doubt or not, unlike our friend Noah from The Notebook. Unfortunately, this fact about psychological discrepancies isn't widely known. This was made clear to me when I had a conversation with one of my peers. When the topic of consent came up, they mentioned that asking for consent felt awkward and that it was just easier to go slowly and hope that the other person would pull away or make a sign if they were uncomfortable with the situation. Now this feels like a fail safe for teens, a, a nice surefire way to ascertain if their partner is ready and willing without them having to go through the vulnerability of asking. But I would argue that that is not enough. I get that asking for consent can feel awkward or scary. With the minimal dating and sexual experience that teens often have, we often haven't had enough time or independence to truly understand how most relationships work. Often, teens will either consciously or subconsciously turn to things they see in TV, movies, ads, or porn to guide their decisions. But the problem here is that media portrayals of consent are misleading, sometimes toxic, and virtually always romanticize spontaneity at the expense of consent. After that conversation with my peer, I was curious to see if other teens felt the same way. So I did a poll on my Instagram. 44 people responded, 14 boys and 30 girls, and the results were very interesting. So first, I must establish what I asked. My first question was, is consent awkward or asking for consent? And the second question I asked is, is consent sexy? So for the first answer, I got 50% of boys saying that consent was awkward, and I got only 12.5% of girls saying that asking for consent was awkward. These were interesting poll results. I have a theory that it has something to do with vulnerability, but I would need to do more research to understand why there is that disparity between boys and girls. Despite the results of the first question, 61% of all teens on my poll said that yes, consent is sexy. Now this is interesting and also good news. This is because even though people might find it awkward or a bit scary, people aren't opposed to consent. They want it, they welcome it, and this is good. We can build off that. This implies that if we can normalize the practice of asking for consent and remove the perceived awkwardness, teens will benefit by increasing trust between consensual sexual partners. There are many factors that lead to teens feeling awkward or scared when asking for consent. These include, but aren't limited to, embarrassment, insecurity, lack of knowledge of the topic, lack of experience, and a fear of vulnerability. It's important to recognize that it's totally okay to feel awkward or scared but that shouldn't be an excuse for not asking. It's important to recognize that it's okay to feel awkward or scared or nervous when asking for consent, especially when navigating these uncharted territories as a teen. The solution I offer today is not meant to solve all of these factors, but rather to help us find a way to feel emboldened, to feel more comfortable when asking for consent. The trick as I see it to asking for consent is to learn to talk about it. 
Learn to talk about asking for consent with your friends and people you trust. Now, I'm by no means telling you to walk up to a stranger or to talk about things you aren't comfortable with. It's so important to talk about these things and I don't want you to get out too much of your comfort zone. All you need to do is talk to your level of comfort with someone you trust about consent. Maybe you guys will learn something. When talking with people we trust, we get to do away with shame and other negative emotions that may have been instilled in us through societal norms. This will help us grow and trust, and it can only do us better. Now to the parents of adolescents, I'd like to ask you, would you rather have an open and honest conversation with your child about consent and other topics under the umbrella of sexual education, or would you rather them learn it from things like porn that they're secretly watching behind closed doors? Overcoming outdated taboos is the first important step towards healthier relationships. It will help us respect ourselves and help us respect others. We do ourselves an act of kindness when we strip away shame and restriction. Be kind to yourself and be kind to others. And remember, when in doubt, or not, just ask.